We are live. Thank you. Sergeants, begin your recordings. Cloud is up. Backup is rolling. Thank you, Sergeant Polite. You may begin to open. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to the remote hearing on civil and human rights. For council members and staff, please turn on their video at this time. Thank you. To minimize disruptions, please place all cell phones and electronics to vibrate. Chair, we are ready to begin. Thank you very much. Uh, let me first apologize. We, we had uh, technical difficulties, and thank you for the staff for uh, working together to make it happen and uh, to make, you know, the public hearing and vote possible. Uh, uh, welcome uh, to the to, to today's hearing of the Council Committee on Civil and Human Rights. I'm uh, Matthew Eugene, the chair of the committee. Let me first recognize my colleagues who are here with us. I see Councilmember Jones, thank you very much. I saw also Councilmember Bounds, Pekins, and Councilmember Gibsons, and uh, to all of you staff from the city council, from the speaker, thank you very much for your work. Today, the committee will vote on a very important piece, piece of legislation proposing to 20, 2212. It would power the uh, Civilian Complaint Review Board to investigate bias-based uh, policing and a racial policing complaint made by the public and to investigate the past of professional conduct of police officers found to have engaged in acts of bias. It would also require the police department to solicit an independent review of NYPD's equal employment opportunities <clears throat> division cases. Hate and bias have no place in our society and especially in, the pol in our police department. This bill will add a much needed layer of oversight and accountability to ensure that our police force uploads, uphold the highest level of res respect and integrity. I Now I would like to invite the sponsor of the proposing tour 2212A, Council Member Gibson, to deliver an opening statement. Councilmember Gibson, please. Thank you, Chair Matthew Eugene, and good afternoon to all of my colleagues on the committee. Thank you so much. I am proud to speak in support of proposed intro 2212-A. Uh, as many of you know, in my new capacity as Chair of the Committee on Oversight and Investigations, our committee has conducted important work in the last several months with regards to racism, hate, and bias in the NYPD. The revelations that we uncovered about former deputy inspector and the EEO commanding officer, James Coble's grossly offensive online posts were not only disturbing in and of themselves, but also raised serious questions about the NYPD's ability to police itself when it comes to instances of troubling racist and other hateful words and behavior. The testimony that was provided at our oversight hearing in last December and at this committee's hearing just last month on this legislation, unfortunately was not very reassuring, uh, making the need for the reforms delivered by this legislation today abundantly clear. As the chair mentioned, this bill would empower the Civilian Complaint Review Board to investigate bias-based policing and racial profiling complaints and to investigate the past professional conduct of police officers who were found to have engaged in acts of bias. This will be a very significant and impactful reform measure put forth today. When a police officer is found to have engaged in hateful conduct, not only must he or she be held accountable as former Deputy Inspector Coble was when he was terminated by the NYPD, but every effort must be made to ensure that the officers' biased views and beliefs did not unfairly impact their past work. And in that vein, the bill also requires the police department to solicit an independent review 
of cases that are handled by the NYPD's Equal Employment Opportunity Division while it was led by this former Deputy Inspector Coble. Uh, truly, we believe and we're optimistic that these reforms will reassure New Yorkers that we have robust procedures in place to ensure that the police department is protecting them and enforcing our laws fairly, always free from hate and bias, and with the courtesy, professionalism, and respect that all New Yorkers deserve. These measures will also benefit the thousands of officers who go to work every day, wanting nothing more than to protect their fellow New Yorkers and look out for everyone, no matter the background or identity. Every officer deserves to work in an environment that is free of corrosive and dangerous elements, such as hateful ideologies and what we've seen with this former deputy inspector. I'd like to thank Ed Atkin and the team at the ONI committee, my director of legislation and policy, Jeffrey Velasquez, and everyone who worked really hard on this bill. And certainly I wanna recognize our former colleague and former chair of this committee, now Congress member Richie Torres for really starting this process and leading the way on this investigation and allowing this legislation to come forward. I hope my colleagues on the committee will support this bill. We believe it moves us forward and continuously having the conversation around bias policing and racism in our department. And we truly hope that you can support this legislation. Thank you so much, Chair Eugene, and thank you to the members on the committee. Thank you very much, uh, Councilmember Gibson. Thank you. Uh, now I would like, I would like to ask uh, the committee clerk to conduct a roll call vote on this uh, very important bill. Uh, Billy? Mm -hmm. Councilmember Perkins will be voting from my screen. So just give me a couple of minutes when you call him to unmute. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call, Vote Committee on Civil and Human Rights, proposed introduction 2212A, Chair Eugene. Uh, before I vote, I want uh, to acknowledge also that Councilmember Brad Lender have joined us. Thank you, Councilmember Lender. I vote aye. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Permission to explain my vote. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I want to thank uh, my colleagues for this opportunity to talk about this bill. And I think that the intent of the bill is commendable, but there's a scripture that says you don't put new wine into old wine flasks. The CCRB is inadequate, incompetent, ineffective and just not able to do the task that it is appointed to do. So we're adding another component, expecting that an, an entity that has not proven its ability to address the issues either in discriminating, either in selecting the cases that they pursue or in coming to the results that are necessary. And there are many factors that inhibit them getting to that conclusion, but they are inadequate. And just to let you know, finally, after more than a year in drafting, I will be introducing legislation today that calls for an elected civilian review board. We're calling that the Community Power Act, standing for police oversight with elected review. And that's what we need, not this CCRB, which has not given us the results that we need. We shouldn't be pouring this new wine into an old wine flask, but with the intent of what this bill is doing, I will be voting yes. It's a stopgap until we get to the real thing, the elected Civilian Review Board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome, Council Member Ballard. Council Member Drum. I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Lander. Uh, sorry, request permission to explain my vote? Uh, permission granted. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to be abstaining today uh, for the reasons both that Councilmember Barron spoke to. I mean, this is a critical issue. I appreciate the work of the chair rooting out bias in the NYPD. And what we learned about Officer Coble requires, um, you know, a very strong response. But first, 
This bill further affirms the NYPD commissioner's sole responsibility over discipline. Uh, we have another resolution we're passing today calling on the state to change that. But until we do, I just don't see a reason to believe that this bill will make any difference. Um, and in addition, um, oh, my apologies. Uh, Billy, I think we lost him. Uh, can we call the next member and then come back to Council Member Lander? Sure, absolutely. Thank Council you. Council Member Perkin. Council Member Perkin. Thank you, I vote aye. Thank you. By a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention, the item is adopted by the committee. Just hold while I try to get Council Member Lander. He logged off. Um, just let's give him. Let's keep this open for a minute. See if he logs back on. Uh, Council Member Lander has signed back on. Council Member Lander? I apologize. Can you hear me okay? I'm having some trouble with my connection. Yes. Can you keep your video off? It, that should help. Yes. Thank you. I will keep my video off. Um, uh, so I'm abstaining today on the bill for reasons I started to explain and I don't know if it could be heard, but I uh, do I need to say them again? Yes, please. Okay, sorry. So I'm abstaining on the bill today, um, probably for the reasons that Councilmember Barron articulated. Um, in particular, three things. First, this bill reaffirms the commissioner's sole authority over discipline, which obviously is currently a matter of state law, but we're passing a separate resolution in today's meeting on the floor, uh, calling on the state to change that. And until we change that, I don't see a reason to be optimistic uh, that anything real is going to change here on this extremely important uh, issue. Second, this bill calls for an a independent investigation, but to be contracted by the NYPD, and I believe it should be contracted either directly by the CCRB or by the Department of Investigation, but that the NYPD should not be able to select its own overseer on a matter where it's demonstrably uh, failed. Um, and third, in some cases, individual investigations will require that the NYPD first come to its own internal determination uh, before the CCRB takes up its study. So this is a critical issue. I respect the work that's gone into it uh, by Chair Gibson and others um, who I know really wanna see us make progress here, um, but um, I will be abstaining on today's bill. That's it for the voting, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry? I believe Council Member Barron has her hand up and wants to say something. Yes, Council Member Barron. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sergeant Perez. I'm glad you noticed my frantic waving. Uh, I've been greatly influenced by the comments of my colleague, and I'm changing from a yes vote to an abstention. Thank you. For those same reasons that he cited. Thank you. Okay, revise, <clears throat> excuse me, revise the vote in the Committee on Civil and Human Rights. Proposed introduction 2212A is now adopted by the committee three in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and two abstention. Thank you very much. Um, with that, uh, this hearing is adjourned. <laughs>